Trujillo has Ferguson in the backfield. Gives it off, Ferguson, touchdown Davis! Spencer Ferguson from five yards out, and the darts have tied it up 20 apiece with 101 left. Welcome in Deseret News Rewind, Dusty Litster, Dane Stewart, as always, presented by Hideman Associates, brought to you by the Utah Army National Guard. That's right, Dusty, and uh, hey, happy Halloween to everybody. I, uh, I got my Halloween costume on. I don't know if you know, but I dressed up like a uh, sports commentator this year, and uh, there's no better place to go for my costume than BlackCloverUSA.com. In fact, if you use the promo code DNR20, you can get 20% off your order from BlackCloverUSA.com. Dot com full lineup of men's and women's gear both polos outerwear hats uh thanks to black clover for their sponsorship here of desert news rewind yeah i want my kind of partial marty mcfly look yeah yeah Dork thinks he's gonna drown so uh <laughs> yeah go to black clover usa uh, go support those who support us and uh let's get started let's go right to this opening statement brought to you by heideman and associates and we want to talk about accomplishments 2020 has been a rough year matter of fact yeah. The last two weeks, if you're a team in the state tournament, is a rough, for half the teams that play, is a rough time. But plenty of accomplishments to go around. Yeah, Dusty, you look at what this year has meant to some of these programs. And, you know, we're here at Davis High School. There's a reason for that. But Davis, this is a, a team that, Dusty, they were one of the a consistent region champion making deep runs in playoffs. The wells run dry in recent years. How about 2020 for the darts? The most wins for the program since 2015, mm -hmm. and that was secured in a big second-round playoff win last night. We'll talk about that later. You also have the West Panthers, Dusty, a team that has been down in the you know, bottoms of their region for a while. Coach Solovey in year number two has done a great job of turning that program around and had a remarkable win this week. Another program setting a, a new win total since 1996. Been a while for the Panthers. First quarter final since 2011. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, awesome to be able to see that program get turned around and be able to see the success there. Uh, another program that just set a mark this weekend with a playoff win, Salem Hills, Dusty. This is now the best two-year period for Salem Hills. They've won 19 games the last two years. Previous mark was 18. Coach Higginson in his first year, but this is an experience much for the Skyhawks. They've been able to do a lot of things to help get that program, you know, they made it to a semifinal last year. They'd love to make it to another semifinal, maybe a championship this year, but the best two-year run in program history, it's a short history, but the best two-year run in the history for Salem Hills. Well, let's go one more. I'm going to steal this one from a little bit. and I mean, I apologize about, apologize about it up front, but anytime you end something that happened for 10 years, I'm going to make sure I bring it up. Cedar City moves on. Yeah. How did they move to the quarterfinals the first time in 10 years? The first time they beat Dixie yeah. in 10 years. And we'll go through some more details. That's yeah. some fun facts. There's That's a lot of details them. about that one. Yeah. That's only one of the fun facts yeah. that I gave up on that one. But uh, Cedar Cedar City knocking off a nemesis, that's a, that's a very, very good, good thing to bring up. Yeah, that's a great one. Great one. Um, any other ones you want to bring up? Uh, we're going to save a couple, Dusty. We can't give out all the candy to the first trick-or-treater. <laughs> we we got to spread it out throughout the night. Yeah, so let's talk about beginnings and ends, shall we? And I've been waiting to do this for a little bit. It's starting to get a little personal, but... Our fans watch our show. We talk about lots of things on yeah. here. You know, we talked about last week, had a new addition to the Litzer family, Detmer, right? We yep. had a baby. Yep. But also doesn't come without a time of melancholy in life, just like our lives. We see a lot of people move on and uh, a lot of success. And, and I apologize to do this here, but, uh, you know, we had some news, other news in the Litzer family about a month ago. And I just want to make sure to send stuff to my mom. All of us have, whenever we lose or we win, the first people that we see in our lives are our mothers. And uh, my mom has been that for me. My mom was diagnosed uh, recently with ALS. And uh, just wanted to tell my mom how much I love her and how much for all of us and whatever we do, there's those people in our corners and in those tough and good moments, moms are those people. And that's my mom. And I want to be, let her know that I'm in her corner too. And, and uh, those of you, there's plenty of people out there that have family members going through disease. And we talk about that. Um, hold them close and hold them tight because uh, those moments are fleeting. And it's been those really realizing moments, especially in the last week for me and, and talking about family and new for us with a new child but also watching what's coming with my mother as well. It's a, it's a hard thing, but it's one to let her know how much we love her and, and uh, she's in uh, how much we love her and I appreciate everything she's done for us as we move in, we keep moving forward in the show. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Dusty. And Mama Litster, you know, you've been great to me. We've, you know, I've been kind of an outside member of the Litster family now for a long time and she's always been great to have open arms, very welcoming of me in, in your home, been there for holidays before and just want to, you know, wish you the best in, in this battle and no, I'm in your corner too. If there's anything we here can do, me personally, but uh, we're thinking of you and wishing you the best of this time. Yeah, so think of your loved ones this time of year <clears throat> as we get close to the uh, holiday season, but wanted to take a moment to do that. Let's jump right into this. Let's get back to being happy, shall we? 
Davis Weber, our game of the week. And it lived up to it. Yeah, it did, Dusty. This was one that in the first matchup was a, re a regular season matchup, region game. And, you know, this was a tale of two halves in the regular season. Weber had a 24 to 7 lead at the break. Davis made a late charge. It took a late play by Weber in order to come back and get that victory over Davis. How would the playoff game play out? Well, it'd play out well for the Weber Warriors in the first half. Uh, first half we start, and how about Gage Lloyd, Dusty? He gets the he gets the show moving early, a 43-yard touchdown run. About midway through the first quarter, it's 7-0 for Weber. That Weber defense, we've seen them all year long be aggressive and active. They were in this first half. They shut down Davis. I don't know if they allowed a first down in the first quarter. It would uh, be another three and out for the darts, and Lloyd, another drive here for Weber, capped off by the running back from four yards out. The PAT would be missed, but Dusty, it is 13 to nothing. Weber late in the first quarter. To the second quarter we go, and more for the Warriors. How about this throw from Lindsey to Brosterhouse? 54 yards to the house. Touchdown, Weber. 20 to nothing. The Warriors about to run Davis off the field, but the darts tell you this is an experienced group. We talked about everything they've been building for this senior class. They had a charge to make a late drive, and man, what a throw here from Trujillo to Spute. They get this inside the five, have first and goal. That Weber defense would be stout on fourth and goal. Trujillo, oh. That's just not fair. Able to keep it on the read. He even looks back at the Weber defense to get Davis on the board going into the break. 20 to seven with that touchdown large loom in the big momentum. We would find out second half and third quarter. These two teams really struggled to find a lot of consistency. We're gonna jump ahead to the fourth. Fourth quarter and Dusty, that Davis offense was finally starting to get some traction, establishing the run game, short passing game. How about this play? Trujillo throwing back to Ferguson. Davis in the end zone, the first touchdown of the night for Spencer Ferguson. With three minutes left, it's 20 to 14. Watch out for the darts. Onside kick. Oh, Weber recovers. Well, with that run game engaged, Lloyd, they're just going to run this clock out right now. Oh, no. A fumble on the first play from the line of scrimmage for the Warriors. Davis has it, and the darts are in business. Trujillo with a couple of nice plays to help move Davis inside the 10. And then there's old reliable Spencer Ferguson taking this in from five yards out, and the darts take the lead with 101 left. What does Weber have left in the, in the tank here? It would end up coming to a fourth and 10 and the ball game here for Weber. The throw looking deep for DeVries and it's incomplete. The Davis defense, Dusty, makes a stop. Man, I tell you what, you're down 20 to nothing in a ball game against a team that you had already lost to. They'd lost four straight against Weber. Look, we're gonna take care of this at the start. This is my Riley Jensen mental performance toughness moment of the week. You're down 20 to nothing against a team that you lost to earlier in the year. We talked about, you know, Davis has not had great years in recent years trying to get this thing back on the right side, competing for regions and state championships, and you're down 20 0 in the second round. You need those seniors to come up big. Chance Trujillo did that. Spute had plays, Ferguson had plays to help bring Davis back from uh, what looked like dire circumstances in the first half. To me, that trio, really the entire Davis offense, they are my Riley Gentle, <laughs> Riley Jensen mental performance performers of the week. And not only that, how about the, sometimes life's going to give you the opportunity you're asking for, you have to take it. The ball's on the ground after not getting the onside kick. Yeah. Davis, they're not looking their wounds. They right. pounce on that ball and set up the game-winning drive. I thought that was one of those two. Also had a fourth down stop in the yeah. third quarter where Weaver's knocking on the door to put this ball game away. Shut him down. And again, if you need any help whatsoever, as Dane says, boardroom, playing field, anything. If you need private quarterback coaching, Riley Jensen's the guy to go yeah. to. Go to RileyJensenPerformance.com. Set up your appointment with Riley. And all that, he's adding other professionals into his practice as well. This is a booming business. Go support him at Riley Jensen, Riley Jensen Consulting.com. Again, RileyJensenConsulting.com. All right, let's get into the best of 6A. I'll start here. A program that we know to be very, very good. They've been gone through the ringer this year. And he went through the ringer yesterday. How about Bingham? Ball down 7-0 yeah. at the half to uh, PG. Score 14 points in the third quarter. It was Glasker getting that 48-yard touchdown catch and then Ackerman a one-yard run. But I got to tell you, PG was up for the task. We talk about uh, Darius Clemens. This kid has an amazing catch at the end of this game. Tied down 21-14. Bingham takes the lead 
PG has a shot. Britton to the back of the end zone. Darius Clemens, look at him climb the ladder and pull this one in. An absolutely terrific catch. Britton had to come in in place of Levitt, who uh, well, he played the whole game, but he replaced Levitt, who's injured. And then down the stretch, Bingham gets set up, and it's Nate Chamberlain, 27 yards out. And Dave Peck gets another win, moves on to the quarters, where they're going to take on Corner Canyon. Uh, but a big time win for uh, for Bingham. I know I didn't pick Bingham to win that game in our schedule video. What was I thinking? You know, the last time Bingham hasn't made it to the quarterfinals, odd three. <laughs> I didn't realize. Might that. as well just start writing yeah. it in every year. Bingham to the quarters once again in 2020. <laughs> My best of six, a eh, Dusty. Hey, I'm not, I'm going to go not too far from here. Well, that's where the game was played. How about West and Roy? I mean, we talked about earlier the accomplishments for this West team and what it's meant to this program. But, man, this was back and forth, Dusty, in a crazy ball game that had offense for both sides. And, you know, you have a West team, Dusty, that a couple of opportunities, they have some late fumbles where it's like, oh, man, they're giving Roy short fields. One of those Roy was able to capitalize on. Another one, the West defense made a big stop. West had an eight-point lead in this ball game. Roy, with some creativity, getting down the field, able to score a touchdown. Two-point conversion, look, it may not look pretty, but it got the I job done. Yeah. And uh, they tied this ball game up with, what, 15 seconds left? Oh, sweet, we're going to overtime. Oh, man, you kick it to Bird Butler, and Clarence Bird Butler does the rest. How about this? Bird Butler had three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Also, he's got to be a Falcons fan because he learned from uh, Todd Gurley. I love the touchdown where he tries to stay out of the end zone, going to force Roy to punch him in. They did it, and it was good for Roy because it gave him time, but Bird Butler puts the uh, finishing touches on this one with a 95-yard kickoff return. And a young man who, Dusty, uh, look, call me crazy, he might be the best athlete in the state. All around, he's up there. He's right there. I'm telling you, he had a vertical in a game against Jordan. I swear he leaped four feet in the air. I mean, this kid can do it all, and he does it all for West in a big uh, second-round victory over Roy. Now, the law firm at Clarence Bird Butler, <laughs> yeah, he, he right. was laying it down uh, on Friday. That was a great one. Best of 5A, and this is an interesting one because we knew this game would be good. We had it, and uh, Bingham, or probably Bingham, Timfew at Olympus, and this was a game that went – now, obviously, back and forth, it was a close game. It's seven to six, virtually the entire game. Raider De Mooney, who I hear does a great Dane Stewart impression, uh, had a first touchdown of the game on a 48 yard touchdown pass. Um, but in the end, in the third quarter, this game's still seven to six. Uh, Pokai Haunga, Haunga had a 20 yard interception return for a touchdown. The very next possession for, uh, for Olympus, Logan Fano, a five yard pick six. Back to back pick sixes opens this game up. And Tintu in the fourth quarter scores 28 yeah. points to go from a 7 to 6 game to a 35 to 13 win over Olympus. Yeah. Impressive win for Tintview. It better be sharp because it doesn't get any easier. My best of 5A, Dusty. I'm going to go to a program that we had talked about a little bit earlier. How about Salem Hills taking on Box Elder? Box Elder does not give up a lot of points traditionally week to week. Well, Jared Elmer took care of that. He had four touchdowns all through the air for Salem Hills in a 44-13 victory over the Bees. Talk about the best two-year you know, span in program history for Salem Hills. Looking to make another deep playoff run. Coach Higginson has these boys playing well. So best of the rest in this game. If it weren't for the, uh, well, the bunch of really good games, maybe that Roy game, Roy West Roy, this game would be the best game. Green Canyon and yeah. Bear River. It was a terrific regular season battle. The playoff version was every bit as good, if not better, uh, depending on what side you cheer for, by the way. Uh, but first of all, before we get going, an amazing game for Jake Lundeen. This kid was all over the place. He ran the ball, including a 42-yard touchdown run. He was just spectacular. And then Caden Stewart scores on a 35-yard touchdown pass from Lundeen. You think, okay, Green Canyon is going to take care of business here. And then here comes Bear River. To use a term from 14 years ago, the return to dominance. Remember they had the RTD on their field back then. Garrison Marble, a 55-yard touchdown pass from Case Jones, the running back. And then it was Gabe Dewallaby, 58-yard touchdown to give Bear River the lead, 32 to 28, and that's the final score. There was no Lundeen magic like it was at yeah. Bear River and Garland in the regular season. He got pretty close, but Bear River holds him on a fourth down, and the Bears return to dominance and get a win over Green Canyon, 32 to 28. That was an interesting second half, Dusty. It was a 13-0 third quarter advantage for Green Canyon, 14-0 advantage in the fourth for Bear River. Man, emotions all over in that one.
Yeah, that was, was good. Yeah, we got to watch that one. Yeah, that was great. My uh, my best of the rest. I'm gonna go down south, and uh, Cedar City. We see you. My goodness, both of us. We missed you on that one. This was a close regular season matchup. Match on Twitter didn't forget that. Right, right. I yeah, appreciate <laughs> that. Cedar City and Dixie. Dusty, and uh, this was all Cedar City in the victory. Jaron Garrett, Garrett had two rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns, 28 to nothing. You talked about the streak for Cedar City against Dixie. How about this? Dixie hasn't posted a shutout since 2011 in a playoff loss to Juan Diego. It's been almost 10 years since Dixie has gone scoreless. That city, Cedar City defense came to play and shut down the Flyboys in a big second round win. Yeah, they had a lot of, some of those were inside the red zone. There was a goal line stand wow. as well inside the five yard line in that one. That's a great one. But uh, all right, let's get to the quick hits brought to you by the Utah Army National Guard. If you need to make a change in your life, over 150 job training opportunities through Utah Army National Guard. That's right. And you can earn up to $20,000 in educational assistance or $20,000 in signing bonus, depending on which path you elect to choose. To learn more, visit NationalGuard.com. Well, let's go. I'll get started here. How about Wasatch hosting Lehigh yeah. and Wasatch? This was a team mid-year. We thought, okay, here we go. And that Salem Hills game maybe took a little bit of the luster off. Yeah. Well, they took care of business in this one. Uh, that first half, Chris Cook with two touchdowns. Southam had a couple of field goals. Chris Cook had the day. How about this? He had the two touchdowns. He had a third one, a 41-yard a run, a 19-yard spurt from Cooper and the Pioneers. Just not enough. As Wasatch moving on, they go back to – well, we'll talk about them. Oh, we'll go back to Salem Hills. I'll, I'll mention it. Salem Hills game was a different one. Yeah. But uh, Wasatch with the big win, 26-19, to knocking off a semifinal team from a year ago in Lehigh. And uh, the Fighting Coburns live to see another week. You want to talk about a team that has luster. It's Lister's Beaver Beavers, Dusty. <laughs> you know, they put the goggles on that beaver. I love that old school logo. And they just went running right through Millard. How about 36 nothing at the half? They had four first half touchdowns that were all greater than 35 yards, including runs of 66, 55, and 53 yards. And a lopsided victory for the 2A classification, a.k.a. Beaver Beavers. Um, we talked about Delta last week. It's just a fluke. I mean, they only beat North San Pico's Bulls was playing on his injured leg. Right. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So they go to Richfield, best season since 1985. NBD. No big deal. The Delta Wabbits acting like it's in the mid-90s, early 2000s or something. They're just beating the crap out of old Region 18. <laughs> It was a great start for Ridgefield as Ethan Udy had an 85-yard punt return for a touchdown. You think, oh, this isn't good. Then Delta responds. Britton Smith, a 97-yard punt return for a touchdown. Delta goes into the break with a 21-13 lead. Delta or Richfield comes back, scores to tie the, tie the game at 28, and then down the stretch, this game got a little wonky. Fumble at midfield, Delta gets the ball back. And then how about this play? Britton Smith doesn't even know the ball's in the air until right now. To be able to catch the ball, walks in the end zone, and Delta holds on to beat Richfield. The, the fun note in this one, ready for a fun fact? I love fun facts. Delta forced five Ridgefield turnovers. Wow. They took four of those turnovers and turned them into points. That's how they got the win in this one. Delta, Congratulations the, to Delta. The dreaded 12 seed. What do they think this is? The NCAA basketball tournament? What's <laughs> going on? George Mason? I'll tell you what. By the way, you ready for a fun fact? I love fun facts. You know the last four outings for Ridgefield in the playoffs have all come in the quarterfinal rounds? Sorry, cats. Ooh. Yeah, that's rough. Ooh. Hey, you know, uh, speaking of rough, Tiger's blood runs deep in my veins, and not just because that's the kind of snow cone I order. How about the Milford men, Dusty? Look, they lost to Kanab earlier this year, and uh, they had an opportunity for a little retribution, and Milford took care of business. A 24-0 second half for Milford. Hardy had two passing touchdowns. Rose had a punt return for a touchdown to lead off the game. And the Milford men have now entered their sixth straight season with a winning record that's the longest streak in program history since 1970. Congratulations, Milford! We see you again. Yeah, congratulations to the Tigers. Um, interesting one. Just because you think you should be dominant doesn't mean you're going to be because some teams are just going to challenge you on a way to where you want to go, and that's what Juab faced on Friday night. San Juan was up to the task. As uh, Juab jumped out to a quick lead, San Juan came right back. It was... Jace the Snake Palmer finding Lad Ivans for a 13-yard touchdown catch. Juab felt like they were comfortable in this whole game, but man, San Juan kept them uncomfortable. Had a kickoff return for a touchdown call back off on a holding. They had 
two possessions with throws to the end zone. Palmer couldn't connect, but it was a insurance touchdown from Tegan Christensen, a 45-yard pass from Alex Jackson as Juab took care of business 20-7 to over San Juan. You talk about the one seed, I'll take the two seed. How about Morgan dusting Juan Diego, a game that I thought was going to be a tough game in the quarters for this Morgan team. And score looked like it might have been tougher by comparison to some of their recent games, but this was all Morgan. Uh, Lish had two passing touchdowns. Stanley had a 21-yard pick six as uh, Morgan. You know, it wasn't all roses for the Trojans. They had allowed their first touchdown six o since October 9th. They had back-to-back -back shutouts and allowed one late here against Juan Diego. 28-7 as Morgan advances. You know, want a fun fact, for, overall fun fact of the 2A state tournament? Please. The losing team's combined score, 21. All teams who lost in the region in, in the second round for 2A, part of the quarterfinals, only scored seven points. Hey. Duchesne, they want a chance to see Beaver. Or you're going to get it. Yep. As uh, they knock off Parowan 30 to seven. It was Diaz with the 20-yard, or pardon me, Brock Adams with a nine-yard run. We're, nine and ten yard runs uh, for Duchesne as they were able to knock off Parowan and take care of business. The Eagles, they're wanting to put their name back on top of the mountain as they went from 1A to 2A um, in, the, in the big move for the Eagles. A game where I expected points, Dusty. How about Stansbury and Mountain View? And this one, Crew Huxford, three passing <laughs> touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns. Uh, Bushnell had three rushing touchdowns. And uh, I'll tell you what, Mountain View, they hung in this ball game. They did a great job of scoring. But can anyone hold Stansbury under 60? I mean, that's got to be the question, right? 63-49, the, the Stallions uh, take care of the Bruins. Now opening for Iron Maiden. <laughs> yes. The Wild they're Stallions. They're opening something, I'll tell you what. <laughs> All right. I got to go. I got to take a little bit of egg on the face. I go against one of my normal picks that I make all the time. I rarely pick against this school, and now they're making me pay for it. But I just want some love for the fact that if you keep winning. Alta. Alta goes to Bonneville, taking on the number three uh, Bonneville Lakers. And DeAndre Randolph. Does DeAndre? Someone give this kid an offer. Right. Oh, where is it? What's going on? This is. There's nobody better with the ball in the air in this state than DeAndre Randolph. Balls in the air. Number two's coming down with it. 56-yard touchdown pass just to start things off. And then it was Isaac Hansen, 36-yard touchdown catch. As uh, and then others for Altas. They took care of business. They jumped out on Bonneville and never let them up. 29 to nine, the win. For the Alta Hawks, Ethan Jackson obviously having a good day if you have those two touchdown passes. Yeah. As uh, Alimateo's Hawks are one game away from making it to St. George. How about Skyline and Bountiful, Dusty? In a game that Bountiful kept this ball game close, but yes, in the did. end, Braxton Bowling broke too much. Five passing touchdowns for the school's leader. Uh, well, has several career passing marks uh, in school history there at Skyline. 38-28 as Skyline remains perfect at home, in the playoffs, at Roger DuPay Stadium before they rebuild that thing. Congratulations to Skyline advancing to the quarters. Um, ready for an interesting one? We talked about a game that was close then got d dusted away. How about Orem? Yeah. Just because it's close doesn't mean it's going to stay close. This game was 27-21. to 21. Final score, 65-35. to 35. I mean, Just an unreal finish here for Orem. Joe Smith had a, a 49-yard run in this one. Uh, Cynthia Ponga had a touchdown catch, and then also Chisholm as well. They spread this ball around. It was a Joe Smith, a 47-yard kick late in this one, or probably run, and then an 83-yard run. Joe Smith feeling like, all right, well, if Ryan Smith's having a good week in the state of Utah, why don't I have a good, good week in the state of Utah? Congratulations to Orm. Moving on. Oh, and the fun fact, a rarity, an Orm football game. <laughs> Only the second one in the last six weeks. Hey, uh, I mean – Talk about crazy, that Orem offense starting to find itself. Just what everyone in 5A wants to see, yep. huh? Uh, how about Maple Mountain and Springville? Another rematch from a, a region rivalry game in the second round here. And Maple Mountain able to pull this one out 27-21. Nelson had two passing touchdowns. And uh, this was a team that was 0-10 Dusty in 2017. Talk about the job they have done there, getting this program back and right. Look, Maple Mountain, you've got a chance to do something special this year. Pulling for him, but uh, get a nice win here against the Red Devils. Oh, absolutely. Hey, let's go back to that 3A state tournament because all of those games are really, really good games. Yeah. How about Grantsville? Gets two wins against Summit Academy. And uh, it was on the night. It was a big one for uh, Noah Mortensen. By the way, Mortensen's love playing football in Grantsville. Don't know if I've told you that before. Caden Kelly had a 50-yard fumble recovery in a scoop and score. And uh, in the end, <coughs> Summit Academy makes a run. Case, Jackson Case scored late. But Grantsville able to hang on to Blake Thomas, a one-yard run late in the game to come from behind as uh, the Cowboys take care of the Bears. Are you feeling okay? No. Yeah, I... I, I 
you don't look so good. We've actually gone about 20 minutes on our show and we haven't talked about region four. How about Lone I'm Peak and Riverton, better. Dusty, and the Lone Peak Knights, the Knights who say nay. <laughs> it's great to see that defense <laughs> back again. Had a pair of safeties, had a pick six from Arrington from 48 yards out as Lone Peak all over Riverton. Hey, Mooley had three passing touchdowns. And we talk about just consistency. It'll be, well, since 2014, Dusty, Lone Peak has advanced to the semis every year. They've got one more game to go to make it here in 2020. They'll play West, but uh, this Lone Peak team has been one of the best programs in the state over the last several years and shown it again here in 2020. You faked me out for a second. Yeah, You right? got me good. Yeah. Hey, well, how about this? Since I haven't talked about them, this is what I was going to do because they just took care of business on Friday. All four Region 4 teams that we have in the semifinals, well, in our predictions and in the championship game, are all still alive. Corner Canyon had a big win against, yes, a they huge did. win against West Lake. That's why another Region 4 team lost in this one. Yeah. Uh, Sky Ridge. Harriman jumped out on this one 2 nothing. got a safety of McKay Hillstead on their first possession. And then Skyridge got into gear. Hillstead had a big day, and Skyridge took care of business. And you already mentioned the Lumpy game, but uh, and then AF took care of Copper Hills. Yeah. So our re our all Region Four semifinal that we have in championship game is still alive. Still, still active. Any other ones for you? No, I think I'm good. I think we're good too. Let's get to the Black Clover looking good performers of the week. Again, go to BlackCloverUSA.com, put in the code DNR20 and get 20% off your order. And uh, if you're a business owner and you need to get some gear taken care of for your team, if it's not just for Christmas or anything else, hit me up. I'm going to get you set up with the right people at Black Clover and get your, your crew looking good as well. All right, Dan, your pick for looking good. All right, hey, I had a couple of finalists here, but when you review it and you review the context of the game, Dusty, it became pretty clear for me. I'm going to go with Jaron Garrett out of Cedar City. We talk about the two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, accounted for every offensive or every touchdown in the ball game because the defense shut out Dixie. It's an all-around performance. I wish I could give it all 22, shoot, all 60-plus on the roster. We got eliminated to just one, and thereby, Jaron Garrett, congratulations on being my Black Clover looking good player of the week. How about the law firm of Clarence Bird Butler? Yeah. Three touchdowns in the fourth quarter, including the game winner as he took this one up the alley all the way to the house in this stunning win for West. Clarence Bird Butler, there was no other choice for me, and that's not that you didn't have. I yeah. stole it. Yeah. Uh, it was Clarence Bird Butler, the law firm of Clarence Bird Butler. And now let's get to the Kisas Kava Defensive Performance of the Week. Brought to you by Kisas Kava. By the way, you don't have to just mix it. Don't worry about filters. If you're not one of those people who want to mix it, but you want the natural way to calm down at the end of the day, Kisas Kava is where to go get the capsules that they just came out with. Revolutionary. Still 100% kava in the capsules. Put in the code FOOTBALL and get a discount on your order as well. We talked about defense, and we talked about it earlier. Tim Few. Tra down or leading seven to sixty to put a ball game away. Lean on your defense. It was uh, Haunga and also Fano with pick sixes for Tinfu. I know better way to pick a defense and a defense that scores, yeah. and that's what Tinfu's defense had to do to put away the Olympus Titans. Yeah, big outing by Tinfu. Got that offense going too. Felt like that kind of opened everything up for Tinfu in that ball game. Congratulations. To Tim View, moving on. Absolutely. Well, if there's any performances or anything we missed, hit us up on Twitter. We've got you in 4A, 5A, 6A, as we mentioned. Semifinals, championship games. We're going all the way through, yep. even down to St. George as well. For Vince Francis, Dane Stewart, I'm Dusty Lister. Thanks for joining us watching Deseret News Rewind on Deseret.com.